All right, so problem 36, we have that. So let's suppose that 25% of women and 22% of men would answer yes to a particular question. In a simulation, a random sample of 100 men, or I mean 100 women and a random sample of 100 men was selected. And the difference in sample proportions of those who answered yes, given here, was calculated. The process was repeated 1,000 times. Which of the following is most likely to be a representation of the simulated sampling distribution of the difference between the two sample proportions. Okay, so remember, since we have a distribution, we want to look at the mean and standard deviation. So we're doing the proportion of women minus, minus the proportion of men. So we would have mu sub p hat w minus p hat m. And that would just be equal to the mean or the W is equal to the sample proportion of women, which is 0.25 minus the sample proportion of men, which is 0.22. So this will be 0.03. So this will be the mean of the, the sampling distribution of the differences. And so then we now have to look at the standard deviation. So let's refer to our formula sheet. And here we can see sampling distributions for proportions, and we want difference proportions. So we're going to go ahead and use this formula here. So, you know, P1 will let's just make that the proportion for the women, and P2 will make the proportion for the men. Okay, so the standard deviation. Of the differences in the sample proportions would be equal to the square root of the proportion of women is 0.25 times one minus 0.25 or times 0.75 over the sample size for that group, which we have 100 women, both sample sizes are 100. So over 100 plus the sample proportion for the men, 0.22 times one minus 0.22 or 0.78 over 100. So let's take that and calculate that in our calculator. And I like to break it up so I don't like make a mistake when I'm entering the syntax. May take a little longer, but not that much longer. So plus 0 0.001875, all square rooted. Okay, so then we have, we get that's about 0.06. So it looks for the distribution that's centered at 0.03 and has a standard deviation of about 0.06. So that right away eliminates these guys because they're not centered at 0.03. So we're down with A and B. So let's look at let's look at A. 0, it's right at 0.03. But the standard deviation is 0.06. So 0.03 plus 0.06 be way over here, that's a 0.09. And minus 0.06 would be over here, negative 0.03. Now, since we have large samples of at least 30 that were taking a, you know, a, a, a repeated, you know, sampling distribution, repeated sampling distributions for the differences of, this is not exactly, this is not, this is too far for, this is too far from normal for this to be, you know, valid because for it to be normal, it would have to be two standard deviations away where you start to see, you know, um, almost no areas to the right, because 95% of the total area has to be within about two standard deviations of the mean. So it's going to be this one, and so let's just break it down a little bit more. Again, the center is 0 0.03. One standard deviation is about right here, 0.09. Two would be 0.12 away, so 0.15. And so it looks like, yeah, it looks like that. It looks like these are going to 0.1. Not sure, but yeah. It looks like it's going to work just out right on. Minus 15, negative. Yeah. This makes more sense for it to be normally distributed. So the answer is B for sure. All right, 37. According to government data, 22% of children in the US 
under the age of six live in households with incomes that are classified at a particular income level. A simple random sample of 300 children in the U.S. under the age of six years was selected for a study of learning in early childhood. If the government data are correct, which of the following best approximates the probability that at least 27% of the children in the sample live in households that are classified at the particular income level? So essentially, what you would want, to, what we would do is um, conduct a significance tests for um, difference in proportions. So our null hypothesis would be that the true proportion is 0.22. And the alternative would be that the proportion is more than, um, looks like, more than 0.27, so greater than or equal to 0.27. So for this, we would need the test statistic that we would calculate. And we just have to know exactly which formula to use. But there's, you know, a, you know uh, a general form that we're gonna that we're talking about, which is gonna be the statistic value, or that 0.27 minus the parameter, which is 0.22 divided by the standard standard error of the statistic. So let's look at our formula sheet. And you can see that since we're looking at difference proportions, well, actually not, the, we're looking, we're, um, we're looking, we're doing a one sample. Uh, well, we're not, but we're trying to essentially look at um, a, a test statistic for, for, you know, testing this, testing this null hypothesis versus alternative. So our standard error would be this. However, since, um, we're gonna, you know, try to look for a significant evidence against the null hypothesis. We have to, we have to assume the null hypothesis is true. So our p would be the 0.22 in the standard deviation. So it'd be 0.22 times one minus 0.22 or 0.78 over n. And we have n is 300 sample size. It looks like none of these are simplified, so let's look for which one matches this. It's, it's going to be B. All right, the answer is B. That's all there is to that. And 38. The machine is designed to dispense at least 12 ounces of a beverage into a bottle to test whether the machine is working properly. A random sample of 50 bottles is selected, and the mean number of ounces for the 50 bottles was computed. A test of the hypotheses, HO, where mu is 12 versus alternative, where mu is less than 12 was conducted, where mu represents the population mean number of ounces of the beverage dispensed per bottle by the machine. The p-value for the test is 0.08, which of the following is the most appropriate con con conclusion to draw the significance level of 0.05. Okay, so remember the um, general, you know, logic behind significance tests. We want to, um, if we have a p-value, that's less than our then that's less than our alpha value, then that's significant evidence to allow us to reject an null hypothesis. However, when the p value is more than alpha, so when p the p value is greater than our alpha, that means we're gonna we, we're gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis because um we don't really have strong enough evidence. To, you know, say the null hypothesis is not true. Maybe it isn't true, but it's just like it's not unlikely though, because eight percent is still you know something that's reasonable to occur every once in a while. So we want to basically re fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's see which one of these would you know say that. So because the p-value is greater than the significance level, there is convincing evidence that the population mean number of answers. No, so this is, there is not convincing evidence. You want the one that says there's not convincing evidence. So same, so not A or B. I think it's gonna be C because the p-value is greater than the significance level. There is not convincing, there you go. There's not convincing evidence that the population mean number of ounces dispensed since so the bottle is less than 12 ounces. So our answer would be C, all right. And there you go, that's all there is to that. Hope that helps.